From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Brittany Arnold. And I'm Victoria Serbnik. Fires have dominated campus news lately. We start with the latest on the fire that broke out near Loyola's Lakeshore campus on Monday. The fire near Fairfield Hall is still under investigation. It broke out in the back of the Lakeside Place Apartments at 6244 North Winthrop. Some residents were trapped and others jumped out of windows. Eleven people were taken to hospitals in serious to critical condition. The hospitals would not release information on their current status. Residents of the building still cannot go in and are being cared for by the American Red Cross. Fire investigators say the fire started accidentally when a lit candle fell under a couch in a third floor apartment. Fairfield Hall on campus was evacuated during the fire, but students were allowed back in later Monday morning. Just three days before the fire near Lakeshore campus, there was a small kitchen fire in Baumhart Hall on Water Tower campus. Ashley Barnes has more details on the damage. Over spring break, a small fire occurred in Baumhart Hall, causing over $150,000 worth of damage over six floors and displacing a total of 13 students due to damage such as the room we're in right now. Baumhart Hall was evacuated and the sprinkler successfully extinguished the fire, but as a result of the sprinkler discharge, water leaked through the building to the second floor. One communal area in the workout room on the fourth floor received significant damage. To ensure the water will not mow, the floors of the damaged rooms have been torn up. I talked to a student who says the fire is an inconvenience. I heard a kid today on the shuttle saying how he's completely stranded and staying on like one of his friend's couches and he doesn't know what he's going to do for his room and it's, I guess it's a bit of an inconvenience, but. 13 students have been moved into empty dorm rooms in the building for the remainder of the year. Residence Life says it could take four weeks to clean up the damage. Mayor Daly, is, Mayor Daly is about to wrap up his final term in office, and one of his last stops was Loyola on Monday to speak about his 22 years as mayor. Daly spoke to an audience of about 200 Loyola students, faculty, and staff on a wide range of topics, including education, the role of government, and gun violence, and he offered advice to students seeking a career in public service. Daly said education was his biggest achievement while in office, particularly progress with the Chicago public schools. Daly said the lack of progress on gun violence is the only regret he has as he leaves office in May. We kill more people in America. We kill the best way by guns that we have in our society. And that's the regret that I had, that America has never changed on gun violence. During the Q&A session, Daly revealed how he remembers to keep the human side of government in perspective. And in my office, I have a whole, right in front of my, my desk, I have all these pictures of people who, who have been killed in line to do a fireman, policeman. I have uh, people get killed in Iraq and um, Afghanistan and people I've known in my life, priests, Father Graham, other ones who died. And you know I tell people? That's my human side in my life. I'm the mayor, so what? But that's my human side. Students attending the event thought Mayor Daly addressed key issues affecting the city, such as education, the size and role of government, and the Supreme Court ruling that overturned Chicago's gun ban. I was glad to hear him speak about the guns issue um, because I have felt that it's a really contentious topic in the city. In addition to hearing the mayor speak on key issues, Students got to see a more personal side of the mayor. He talked about how he has pictures of um, deceased policemen and firemen and um, military members on his desk as inspiration and that, that's his human side and that's the part that you really don't hear about daily when he's talking on TV or ranting about something. Daly's last day in office is May 16th. Loyola's president, Father Garanzini, outlined several priorities in his State of the University speech this week. The first priority he touched on is improving student retention, which has been decreasing in recent years. Garanzini also wants to continue investing in infrastructure, including more housing for freshmen as well as upperclassmen. And the university is completing the sale of the health center to an outside company, but Loyola will continue to operate the medical school. 
It's been a bad week for coaches at Loyola. Men's basketball coach Jim Whitesell has been fired. In seven seasons with the Ramblers, Whitesell compiled a record of 109 wins, 107 losses overall, but only had a record of 50 and 70 in the Horizon League. His record this year was 16 and 15. New athletic director Grace Calhoun says she felt a change was in the best interest of the program. Also fired on Monday, women's soccer coach Frank Mateus. Mateus had been at Loyola six years. In the last two seasons, the team has won only about a third of its games. A Loyola graduate student and part-time instructor is facing drug charges. Dejan Kral was arrested by agents for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency. He's accused of running a marijuana growing operation at a home in Berwyn. According to published report it, reports, agents found several thousand dollars in cash and about 15 pounds of marijuana drying in Kral's basement with 52 pot plants at another home. Kral is a PhD student and part-time history instructor at, at Loyola. Coming up, are you looking for St. Patty's Day weekend plans? Loyola has a colossal event just for you. And third time's a charm. Students compete to stay green for the third time in a row. Rosita, mm -hmm. did you know there's a right way to sneeze? <laughs> Let's show them in my yeah. hey. When you feel like a nose, please take care of that too. This is how you act, this is what you do. Lift your arm up high, bend it toward your face. Sneeze right there. Preventing flu, visit flu.gov. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. Loyola is bringing it on for this year's National Recycling Competition. For the third year, Recycle Mania is hitting campus. Sean Mayberry reports. Recycle Mania is a 10-week competition for colleges and universities to reduce waste and to help apply better recycling habits. At the end of the 10 weeks, Loyola's recycled materials will be weighed and compared to other schools. Gina Latare is the coordinator for the Center for Urban Environmental Research and Policy. She says the competition has other benefits besides winning. Um, advancing humans' understanding of nature, our connection to nature, our use of, of natural resources and the impact of on nature, um, and then the feedback loop onto human health. Recycle Mania is getting students involved through various competitions on campus. One way is through a weekly trivia through Inside Loyola's online magazine. Students like Rachel Niederhofer thinks Recycle Mania is beneficial to the student body. I think that Recycle Mania is a really good way for students at Loyola to get involved in a really environmentally helpful way. And it's really easy. Like there are recycling bins in, in like the student lounges. And it's also not that hard to just like keep a recycling bin in your own room and then just take it to the recycling bins in the student lounges. A lot of people, they connect with recycling. For them, for a lot of people, it's the first thing that, oh, how can I be more green? How can I do better? And so, oh, recycling. So recycling bins have been placed in most classrooms to help encourage students, faculty, and staff to help contribute to saving the planet. Sean Mayberry, Loyola News, Chicago. If you want to compete, there's still time. The competition ends April 2nd. One singer and two comedians are coming to Loyola for the biggest, baddest weekend ever. On March 17th through 19th, Loyola's first ever event called Colossus will star Jay Sean on Thursday, comedians John Oliver and Donald Glover from NBC's hit series Community on Friday, and Casino Night on Saturday. Casino Night is free to students and will begin at 7 p.m. with prizes such as iPads and Wii systems. Tickets for the concert and comedian's show will be $15 with a Loyola student ID and $10 for an additional ticket. All the events will be in the Gentile Center. A student at UCLA is getting death threats after making a YouTube video that went viral. 
UCLA junior Alexandra Wallace posted a video mocking Asian students on the same day Japan was hit by the devastating earthquake. Her rant included imitating their speech and what she called their lack of American manners. After being harassed by phone and email, Wallace has issued an apology for the comments. Another person making headlines with comments about Japan's tragedy is former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. While subbing on a talk show on WLS Radio Wednesday morning, Blagojevich described his arrest on corrupt charges as, quote, his tsunami. Blagojevich was convicted last summer on one charge of lying to federal agents. His retrial on several other charges is set for April 20th. If you're looking to travel, make sure you get to the airport early. Chicago O'Hare Airport is the world's third busiest hub. According to a report on world air traffic growth, Atlanta Harfield lands the number one spot for the busiest airport, with Beijing second. Chicago O'Hare just moved up to the third busiest, ahead of Heathrow and London. The United States has 13 of the top 30 busiest airports in the world, more than any other country. WBBM Channel 2 is taking it to the streets to find a new traffic reporter, that is. The winner gets a three-month contract worth $25,000, which could turn into a full-time job with a $100,000 a year salary. Applicants can enter online with a 30-second video explaining why they should be selected. Semi-finalists are required to do a traffic report and take a test to show their knowledge of traffic patterns. The contest winner will be announced May 18th and will start on Channel 2, May 23rd. I'm totally trying out for that. How about you? I have no sense of direction, so it's not happening. Where's your right hand? Anyways. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our news for now. Thanks for watching. Join us next week for Loyola's News Chicago.